Hey there everyone, Nubkex here. Do you guys like talents that aren't often picked? Do you like going against the metagame? And you know, building your hero in a way that people don't always expect and just having a bit of fun and experimenting? Well, if so, you're gonna enjoy this game, I think. So I'm gonna be showing you how to build uh, Zagara and how to play Zagara with Knight as Worm instead of uh, Devouring Maw. As you can see here, Devouring Maw by far her most pick, her, uh, picked heroic here. Uh, Nidus Network, almost never picked, but we're gonna be using it in this game and showing some of its strengths, showing some of its weaknesses. Uh, and be warned as well, there is some sass in this game. Uh, Brightwing, our Brightwing is not at all happy that they decide to build this. So we're gonna be talking a bit about that. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna be explaining why, I don't know, why I th say the things I say and stuff. It'll be interesting to see what you guys think. Anyway, uh, what happens here at the start, I'm just gonna be laying out some creep tumors around my lane. Uh, more interesting, I think, so I watch this back beforehand. It's just gonna be a big old fight up top. Yeah, there we go. They're just, uh, kicking each other's ass. Uh, so if we look, we've got really interesting team comps. This is just a quick match, by the way. Um, so we've got two Zeratuls. Uh, our Zeratul does get picked off, which kind of sucks. But if you look at the team compositions, we have, uh, we have Abathur, which is gonna be interesting. Uh, their team, they've got double support, they've got a Morales and a Lili. I think Lili does build for damage. Uh, they have Azul, Azeratul, and ETC. So pretty, like a fairly balanced team for them. Quite focused on melee damage. Uh, it's gonna be hard to secure some kills. We've got, obviously, Abathur, there's Zeratul coming in. So I see him and I back it up. And there we go, I just dropped my uh, Hydra on him. Of course, Morales is there, so he's just gonna be healing it up. I have actually, like, a fairly tough time in the early game getting through this lane. Like, I'm sort of able to push them in, but obviously... I'm never going to be able to, you know, out, out push or out duel two heroes if one of them is Morales. It's, it's just not possible. I don't have any kill pressure on her at all. Like, I can do damage to her, but she can just run away. Uh, we'll both run out of mana slowly. So, I was kind of dodging and, and stuff there. There was no real point because he'd already thrown his W. But anyway, you know, that's life. I'm just going to grab my fountain, come back, and keep trying to stop them pushing in this lane. At least I'm keeping two heroes busy for now. But uh, we're going to have a tough time in the early game, that's for sure, because we have an Abathur. I think Abathur is one of those heroes. And this is actually something we sort of start fighting over. Myself and Brightwing. Or, well, more so Brightwing, I'd say. This is also really interesting. Look at that. I've never really seen that before. The uh, Hydralisk actually getting body blocked by the minions and not being able to path around it. So, hey, there you go. <laughs> little bug, little fun bug right there. Um, we're gonna be quite, you know, we're have, we'll have a lot of kill pressure later in the game, because we could have two Diablos or two Zeratils, maybe even two Zagaras, and that'd be pretty effective. But I mean, uh, in late game, early game, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna suffer a bit. I do get hit by a few sides here, which kind of sucks, but I mean, this is, this is actually quite tough for me in the early game. Like, Zul plus Morales, that is just brutal. <laughs> it's like, so, they're they're invincible. I can't hurt them. I think I spend maybe a little bit too much time attacking uh, Zul, just trying to waste Morales' mana, but I don't really make a dent in her mana. It's actually just costing me more. Um, but, oh well, you know what, that, that's kind of expected. Uh, so, at this point, uh, they did kill ETC, so that's pretty nice. Um, see up here, they did kill him, but uh, Zeratul does have... I think he does decide to Hearthstone back. So at this point, I was like, well, I could run up with Zul, but Zeratul's hearthstoning back. We have Abathur, so that's one less hero who's going to be there on the field. So I was like, look, just, just give it up at this stage. I think I'd say give it up. Yeah, all right. So I ping for a retreat just with right wing, make sure she gets out. She does get out just fine. Um, yeah, I think in, in this case, you know, the first tribute really doesn't do too much. Uh, oh, is she actually going to die? Oh, boy. Not quite. Not quite. Almost, though. But, uh, yeah, so Brightwing, I, don't, I really don't like Brightwing, we're going to talk about this in this game as well. Brightwing, like, brings a lot of passive-aggressive negativity. I'm going to talk about that, and this could be controversial, I don't know. I know, but I've got fairly strong opinions about this. But, yeah, it's like, give up the first one. Again, like, when we've got a stronger late-game team than they do, like, we're really not going to win any of these fights early on. Uh, it's better just to, you know, just give it up and, you know, just make things happen around the map. I mean, we could fight over the second one, that's for sure. But the first one, I'd say, well, you know what? Given the state of the of the map at that at that stage, I, I, don't, I don't think there's a point in fighting over it. Especially not considering that Zeratul pretty much our main source of damage is going back. But anyway, here we go. Uh, the second tribute is spawning. Unfortunately, it does spawn on their side of the map, side of Vision Point. Uh, again, like, Brightwing can come in. I was... Honestly, I was like, I, I can't really go that deep. Like, Zeratul is back in base. Diablo is still mid. I could have gone in, but I was a little bit scared. I've got low mana. Zagara is very squishy. I was like, I don't know. I could I could try to interrupt, but... 
it's I don't know. I don't know if that was safe or not. So Brightwing, the passive aggressiveness con uh, continues. And I thought this is really interesting. So he obviously feels that because we have Abathur, um, that we have an advantage. I don't think that's true. I mean, in a sense, like Abathur continues to be useful, I suppose, over long engagements and he can keep doing things. But um, like it's you're much weaker in team fights, obviously, until he hits level ten and picks up that clone. Uh, you're way weaker in team fights. Uh, but I don't know. I, I don't think I think that's a, a poor decision. I think if our I would have liked to try at least try contest it if our position had been a bit better. You know, maybe we could have picked off Morales or Lily or something, or just made something happen. Uh, but oh well. And you see our teammates. Good work up top. Zeratul actually, I think, gets a double kill up top. I think that's what happened right there. So that's really nice to see. Again, they're pushing me in super hard down the bottom. And there's really nothing I can do. Again, potentially wasting some time attacking Azul. Just trying to get through her mana. But I'm really not able to do enough damage to do um, to push him back. Brightwing does come down to help me out. I mean, losing the gate sucks. But it's not the end of the world. We do have, uh, you know, a decent enough XP lead. We're hopefully going to be able to hit level 10 first. Now, this is a little bit tricky. Um, this tribute we do really want to fight over. We don't want to give them a curse. Um, but unfortunately, we are even in levels. No one has their heroics yet. So we'll see how things go. So, here we go. Dablo a little bit out of position. We've got two teammates down bottom. Abathur wasn't there. So, with him getting killed, that pretty much is... Unfortunately, I, I mount up, but ETC hits me with the power slide. That is, unfortunately, that, that tribute gone. We're not going to be able to contest this. Is there a tool... Now we're just trying to distract them a little bit, which isn't a terrible idea, but he has taken some hits and just trying to kind of zone them away as he comes in. So, you know, first tribute to them, which means that we're probably going to hit level 10 relatively evenly. Uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll see what they can make happen with this tribute. Uh, level 10 is coming in, and this is where the build gets interesting. Uh, so let me actually talk a little bit about this Zagara build now that it's kind of coming online. Uh, I've tried this with a couple of different talents, uh, and the essentials are Battle Momentum at level 7, and then Nidus Network at level 10. You need these together. If you don't pick up Battle Momentum, Nidus Network is awful. It doesn't It doesn't work, you just don't get enough. Uh, the reason this is so good is because, obviously, Battle Momentum works with Nidus Network. So Battle Momentum, if I just show it to you, right? So it's uh, every time we hit a basic attack, it will reduce the ability to cool by half a second. Uh, it takes 60 seconds to recharge, like, uh, one charge of Nidus Network. I'm just holding off at uh, the mid and the bottom lane. While our teammates are fighting up here. Looks like we actually got a pretty good fight. They actually got a... Uh, oh no, sorry. Abathur got killed. But looks like they will pick up Zeratul in return. A uh, nice Void Prison by uh, their Zeratul. Kind of disengaging. And yeah, I'm just being kept busy. I can't quite join in on this. But with Battle Momentum reducing the cooldown on these. It gives you so much more map presence. You can see because I've been using Battle Momentum. I think I'm going to pop a Ninus Network up. Probably around here. Just to come in and send these guys back. We'll see exactly what happens. But uh, it just refreshes the charges so much quicker. And basically what you want to do is you're going to be using this. You see, there, I popped one up here. It's just going to use this for, like, phenomenal map presence. It also gives you, and you're going to see me doing this a few times as well, it gives you some, like, sneaky escapes uh, from uh, <laughs> from some ganks and so on. Uh, for example, their team lacks a lot of uh, hard CC. Morales can knock me back and interrupt my, cha uh, my cast time. There's a little cast to get into the network. And ETC can obviously stop it multiple ways. But, like, Zul's there to Lily. They can't stop me going in there. Um, so yeah, you're going to be able to escape from things. Also, I think the big change that made this viable and makes this really, really cool is that nice Network, uh, does it say it here on the map? Yes, you gain 8% health and mana a second while inside the Nidus Worm. Uh, it's, it's the same as being back in your base, right? So it just, it lets you just soak up. So it lets you do so much stuff, right? With Battle Momentum, you can like spam out abilities. So I see they're coming in. I just throw it on the network. I'm like, all right, get in, get in, get in. So I get in. I thought this was hilarious. Brightwing actually ports in <laughs> and gets killed. So I was just like, rip. Uh, so Brightwing, again, I just I started getting really pissed off right here with the Brightwing. So I start lashing back. Uh, this is kind of my, my attitude uh, towards people. I will never like initiate uh, being hostile to people. I'll never flame people. I'll never start it off, but if I see someone like raging at someone else, if I see someone calling like, say for example, our Zeratul just got like, Abathur, what the fuck are you doing? Like you're a fucking idiot, like uninstall and die. I'd be like, Zeratul, shut up. Like, what the, what are you doing? Like I, I'll then turn around and start being real nasty. But what happened here as well? Um, I'm not just raging. I had, uh, there was like a workman called to the house. I thought this was quite funny. I actually just left myself here. 
And it's hilarious. I, I feel really bad. In fact, let's speed this up. So he's just like, he calls the door. I had to answer the door and let him in and, you know, talk to him and stuff. They're, they're painting our house at the moment. So that's why I had to, like, just run down. I think it was fairly quick. I don't know. I think I'm missing for about a minute. So I feel bad for my teammates. They're obviously kind of screwed because they're expecting me to obviously take part. And I'm not. I thought it was funny that, you know, I'm actually doing a little bit just unintentionally standing here. I think I do come back near enough to here. So we got a clone coming in. All right, I'm back in the game now. So I did something there that I don't normally approve of. Like, I really, I think, you know, if you're going to be interrupted, you shouldn't play. But I don't know. I, I decided to do it anyway. And we arrived a bit earlier than I thought. So, oh, well, my bad. I do feel bad for that. Let me know what you think. But generally speaking, I very much disapprove of that. We get a nice uh, little kill there on their ETC. So that's pretty good. That brings us a little bit back into this game. I think um, Abathur, as he came out of his uh, clone, got picked off by Zul up top lane. Zul was prepared for that. So I'm pushing in. But yeah, from now on, basically in the game, now that uh, I'm back, <laughs> I, I, I didn't feel too bad about it in this game. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm happy if uh, Brightwing interprets that, like me going AFK as a punishment or something. I don't know. Maybe she reported me. I don't really care. Um, but uh, yeah, we picked up that tribute and uh, things are looking pretty good. They do have a level lead, which is unfortunate, but we should hopefully be able to get back into this. But with battle momentum, I'm going to be able to reset my cooldowns really quickly. And I'm going to be able to spam them out. So I'm going to be able to push lanes really hard. I'm going to be able to harass really hard. Then I can just hop back in to a Nidus network and start recharging my abilities. I see, for example, my teammates are fighting down here. I'm able to hop into the network and pop down and help them out. Of course, he, uh, Zeratul did die. But at least, hey, look, I'm down here. We can make something happen. Uh, unfortunately, their whole team pretty much is down here. Just about. So we need to be a little bit careful. We just have a clone doing some damage. Yeah, their whole team is here. Uh, but you know what? At least I'm here as well. They're doing some damage to me. I think we both get killed right here. There's just too much damage. Um, you know, he didn't need to use that Void Prison right there. Uh, I'm Brightwing. <laughs> I thought... But here, prepare yourselves for sass, everybody. Prepare yourselves for sass. Here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, Brightwing continuing the passive-aggressive stuff, you know. Uh, we could really use Maw, but whatever, you know. So, I'm like... I, I just really, I really hate that, you know, someone just bringing that negativity and just whiny stuff into the game. It's just annoying and it's kind of sad. So, yeah, I just go, well, we could really use you not being a little bitch, a quick match, but whatever. So, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much like an eye for an eye in terms of justice. If, if people are really nice, I'll be really nice back. If people start, you know, flaming their teammates, I'll, you know, I'll be mean to them, basically, because they deserve it. Uh, if someone is being like a little whiny bitch, I'll call them out. I'll be like, you're being a little whiny bitch. <laughs> That's my attitude. Um, that might offend some people. I don't know, but it makes sense to me. Nice uh, little gank. Zeratul's waiting in that brush. And we actually get a nice gank off on him here. Again, I can afford to be really aggressive. See, Zul comes in. He drops down his her uh, heroic. He drops down the vo uh, bone prison. I'm just like, all right, see so you. Drop into that Nidus network. Then pop out back here. Um, unfortunately, that ult did... Uh, hello. He did zone me out a little bit, which kind of... Uh, sucks so I didn't quite get into that but um, anyway I do come around and throw some hurt down nice little move by Diablo coming in from behind and picking up a kill so now it's like two for one this is going pretty well and again like they can try to attack me my network is going to be off cooldown very soon I know I can just like pop one out and there I pop one out and just hop in I'm like all right can't hurt me heal up a little bit get a bit of mana back just pop right back out again and here we go come in gonna bully them some more again not too afraid I can run back to my network I know there's not much they can do and there you go, throwing some damage down there. ETC comes in a little bit too aggressively trying to zone for his teammates, ends up giving up his own life. Uh, something to bear in mind, they do have uh, the Medivac drop ship, so they have quite a lot of zoning themselves. Again, Zul's trying to harass me out. I did actually get a little bit caught there, went a little bit too far forwards, but Brightwing with a nice shield there actually, so, you know, fair play to him for that, I'll give him that one. He does uh, save my life right there, which is nice. I pop into my network. And then just pop right out again, having gotten a nice little heal. It just gives you so much presence on the map. Uh, it's it's just great. It's great. So we're able to come in here. And uh, now I've got the mana to kind of harass and you know, just be a bit annoying. Here we go. This fight is going pretty well for us. Zeratul coming in and Morales from behind. We got a clone of uh, Diablo. So Diablo died. But we pick up Zul in return. Looks like our Zeratul is going to fall. But that's uh, most of them are dead. <laughs> I thought this was funny. Zeratul being a little bit perhaps overly ambitious right there. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Um, don't know if he knows how long that lasts. So ETC coming in, I say, all right, well, if you're going to do that, well, you know what? I can take some hits. 
It's going to pop into my network, you know, heal up. Come back with the mana to harass him away. And there you go. That's pretty much um, this tribute secured for us. And what you kind of see from pretty much now on in the game, between, like, Abathur, Brightwing obviously having a global, and then myself having this Nidus Networks, we're going to have a ton of map presence. They're actually, their team is really going to struggle, because they're very low on wave clear. Like, Zul obviously has got ridiculously good wave clear, potentially the best wave clear in the entire game. Uh, but ETC is bad, Morales is awful, uh, Lili's okay, uh, Zeratul is okay as well. Zeratul can be pretty good, but I mean, that's not ideally what he wants to be doing, you know, clearing waves, I guess. What did Lili build? So, blinding wind damage, hit more targets, alright, a bit more healing, okay, okay. Then the healing thing... Uh, blinding Wind slows people, and then more healing. Alright, so she did kind of go for a bit of a hybrid build. Fair enough. Uh, I'm not sure what I think about that. I, to be honest, I would have gone full damage, but that's just me. Um, anyway, here we go. So, just putting some pressure on. we got some mercs and stuff pushing in. I do have, like, a charge. I almost have a second charge coming up. I've got now, like, a, a nice network down here. I've got one up top. I've got one back here. You can have up to four active, so this is pretty solid for us. And again, we've got such good map control. We're able to just pop down here and take the boss. I mean, they might be taking their own boss. But, uh, you know, that's not terrible. Unfortunately, the tribute spawn does happen in a pretty bad spot. They, okay, they were taking their boss as well. I, I threw a maw in, like, kind of aggressively right there. So I, I run down... Not a maw. <laughs> a Nidus network. I run down. I pop into this one. And then I pop out here. Now, unfortunately, they do have such a good position. There's no way we could stop it. I'm just going to distract them a little bit. You know, not really achieving too much. I'm going to pop back into my maw. My teammates pushed in. They actually took out a fort, so that was pretty damn good. At this stage, I think I'm going to... Okay, I actually came back down here. All right, I think I could have used this one. It might have been a bit more effective. That didn't really matter. It didn't really matter. Again, with battle momentum, you have so much freedom. Um, but yeah, it looks like Zeratul. No, okay, it's just a clone of Zeratul, so that's fine. He doesn't even die, which is nice. Uh, but our boss is pushing in, doing some damage to the gate. Looks like they're coming in and trying to push in with their boss, and it's actually costing them quite a bit. Nice uh, Void Prison, I think, from their Zeratul. <laughs> void Prison's on top of Void Prison, so that's kind of funny. We do pick up that kill. Again, ETC trying to dive me, but really couldn't do too much. I did pick up both of the Storm at level 20. I don't know if that's ideal. I just picked it up for that extra safety. I threw down another network, seeing as my one up here and uh, the one down here both got destroyed. I think, you know, Fury of the, Swar uh, Fury of the Storm, excuse me, is also really good. Rooting Nest, I don't know how good it is. It's certainly fun. So, you know what? If you're in Quick Match, try that out. It just, like, make some minions that, like, push the lanes. I mean, I think it would have actually been pretty good. But, uh, you know what? Bolt of the Storm is fine as well. Just in case, you know, I do get caught in a bad position, just ensuring I can stay alive. And so, so, I see they're kind of pushing in middle. And, to be honest, they've got two dead. This is a pretty bad spot for them. Uh, they throw down the Zul ultimate. Uh, someone's coming in behind. Zeratul's got the same idea. They're doing quite a lot of damage to Zeratul, actually, but he does survive. Here we go. I'm pushing in. Uh, doing quite a bit of damage to Morales. We do pick off Morales, myself, and the clone. Right there, I threw in a Nidus network, just to ensure I had a little escape right there. Uh, just in case. Uh, which might have been a bit of a waste, but now I've got, like, a good position to come to. Hello! <laughs> I'm recording, goddammit! Stop trying to talk to me, god damn it. Uh, I think it says I'm watching games, I don't know. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, there we go, there's their Zeratul. They're actually catching us in a pretty good spot right here. Uh, nice Apocalypse from ETC actually saving my life. Uh, so I need to be a little bit careful. I don't, I have bolts off cooldown. Uh, or sorry, it's on cooldown. I don't know, you, those terms are kind of used interchangeably. I don't have a network quite yet, but it is coming up, so I'm feeling pretty safe. A nice little heal from Bitewing, just to make sure nothing bad happens. I throw a network down, just to ensure I've got a little escape here. We pick up the double kill. Their whole team is dead. We're able to pick up this, uh, which is pretty sweet. And there you go. Things are looking pretty solid for us right now. We've got a two-level lead. We've really been just absolutely dominating the map. And you can see as well, one thing with battle momentum is that, you know, your creep tumors actually recharge real quick. So you can set up quite a lot across the map and get a lot of vision. Uh, and then, once again, that Nidus network gives you the mana to, you know, maintain that presence. So, for example, right here, out of mana, hop into that Nidus network. See how quickly it recharges? 8% per second. There you go. It's quicker than heart stoning. And there we go. I can just pop out right here, and I'm back in the fight. Look, they're trying. There's Zul's trying something on. Now, Brightwing came in, too. But either way, Zul's pushed back. And you know what? That actually turned into actually a favorable trade for us right there. And we actually turn around and take down their gate. So there you go. That worked out pretty phenomenal. 
Uh, once again, I'm able to throw down more of these good tumors. And uh, we've got quite a lot of vision. Like, we've got pretty much, like, this whole mid and bottom. We've got complete vision across it. Uh, we're going to know if they're coming in. Uh, I think I might pop into the network again here. All right, just laying down even more tumors just to ensure we got this. I'm popping into this uh, this nice network. But, yeah, like, we've, we've got this pretty well covered right now. They might be able to come up this way. They might be able to contest this one, actually. We'll see how things go. I'm still in the network. All right, I pop one out. You can cast a network while you're inside one. So bear that in mind. They're actually calling in a medivac dropship, so we do need to be careful. Actually, this was a little bit of a risky spot right here. Um, all right, so they came in from this angle. That's fine. We know where they are. Actually, there's their tool. We actually catch him and do a lot of damage to him, but he does get us an avoid prison. So just pinging danger, just letting people know. Uh, our teammates that there were two of us caught in that void prison so be careful really huge apocalypse coming in i think actually our void prison protected a couple of them we do pick up one kill uh, we do have them the teammates in the mosh pit right uh, now though so we need to be careful we pick up though the kill on their zeratul which is pretty sweet their zeratul's going pretty low their whole team is going pretty low i throw it on a maw just to make sure i got something to come back to i bolt the storm active as well unfortunately our, our uh, diablo does die which triggers an apocalypse and he's got uh, his health coming up pretty soon as well uh, Brightwing does get picked off. They're going to try to kill me, but they can't because they don't have any stuns. Um, so I just pop into them all and I survive. So that's something I see. Well, we, we're not going to be able to contest this, so I'm just going to use this to be annoying. I'm going to push in this middle lane. You know what? They can have that tribute. I'm going to push in this mid lane. I'm going to be annoying. I see they're calling in a medivac dropship. Well, that's fine. I'm just going to hop into my uh, Nidus Worm. I'm going to be safe. And there you go. All right, so they come down here to defend middle. Um, so, you know, they're okay at team fighting us. You know, they're not bad. But they really have, like, pretty much zero map control, which is pretty cool. Throwing in a, another little creep tumor there, just to uh, get a little bit more vision, just securing some vision on the top half of the map, realizing that was a little bit lacking. I'm going to join Diablo, we're going to take out this siege camp. Uh, then we might look into maybe, I suppose, at this stage, taking the boss. Um, <laughs> they're down, like, one keep, so this bottom lane is very much in our favor. This boss will be quite a big threat. It's going to walk straight to their core, we see so they're going to have to watch out for that. This time. I see Tribute is actually coming up right here. Unfortunately, they do have, you know, they've got the vision of this. Now, we've got a little bit of vision mid lane, so that's good. We know where they're coming from. I'm throwing in another creep tumor just to uh, watch from this angle. And I like what uh, Zeratul has planned here. He's kind of looking for them coming in. He's in the brush. He's safe. I'm throwing down some damage on this Lily. What is Zeratul planning to do? We got a clone of Zeratul coming in. Huge damage coming in. Zul actually almost dead straight away. There's Zeratul almost dead as well. That's pretty fantastic. You see ETC King coming in. He actually stuns us. At this point, I'm kind of a little bit scared of like mosh pits and stuff. So I like blink, uh, bolt the storm over. I walk right into his uh, like whatever his death metal I think it's called. Where you do a mosh pit when you die. But I was just worried that you know I was going to be caught between their ETC and their team. So I did like bolt the storm there just to be safe. Maybe a little bit of waste, but not the worst. Uh, we almost actually destroy the dropship, but she just about gets away. Doesn't matter. Uh, they die when they come out of that. Uh, they're in a pretty nasty spot. I throw down this. I love that they're... I think he attack moves or something, but he went back to attack him. Almost got himself in a bad position. Let's just throw these maws in kind of aggressively at this point to really push this advantage. It's now, at the moment, like a 5v2. So we've got a pretty huge advantage on the map. I'm just sitting in this maw, regenerating mana. We pick up the tribute. I'm just going to pop right back out and uh, start pushing down uh, against this keep again. Just dropping all my abilities on it. I've got the, like I've got basically unlimited mana, um, so I might as well go for it. You know, just just spend everything, just get it down. Pop into the mall. I threw I throw another mall up here. I see we've got siege minions pushing in. I want to try to keep them alive if possible. Zeratul really wants to kill them though. I think he will kill them. Oh, not quite. It actually just about lives. Uh, but ETC is coming in now as well. So again, we're going to see now, ETC is going to be able to stop me. He actually focuses down the Maw. I think this is a really good choice by him. So I don't have a Maw able to cast now. I keep calling it Maw, I'm sorry. I don't have a Worm able to cast right now. <laughs> I keep calling it Maw. I do have a Bolt of the Storm though, so he gets me pretty low. I'm just able to Bolt away though. And I've got uh, my Not Maw right down there. Just going to Stage Dive in. It was interesting, he went for Stage Dive and Death Metal, which is certainly interesting. So they, you know, they picked up quite a lot of Globals to try to contest us as well. Our teammates are in a bit of a tough spot. I did hop back into that network just to survive a little bit longer. Uh, and I came out down here just making sure it was safe. ETC is looking to maybe pick Brightwing or something. But we're able to throw down like quite a bit of damage on him. So he actually went too far forwards. If he kept diving us there, I think he would have died. But he does back up and Raleigh's coming in to defend against him as well. Or protect him, defend against us. 
Uh, so unfortunately now at this stage, uh, my network, my Nidus network isn't looking too good. I got one down here, which is eh. I have one up here from when we were fighting the boss, which is eh. And they're on cooldown. So, you know what? My network uh, has been kind of decimated. We had those aggressive placements, which have been cleared up. But uh, we still have great control of the map. All their keeps are down. They only have the core left, and it's actually on 33% health. Uh, this boss is probably going to secure us the game. You know, like, I don't think they even have the damage to really contest this boss uh, when we pick it up. Uh, if I mean, we could even just run up and grab the other boss, to be honest, while they're dealing with this one and then push in. Um, they're in a very tough spot. With the tributes this low, the tributes basically do not matter anymore. Uh, no one, I think the game is going to end before anyone gets another curse. So, you know, that's something. Uh, hop into that moth and pop out down here, you know, saving a couple of seconds travel time. We're generating a little bit of mana in the process. And I'm just like setting up and pushing up this wave. And just trying to put some pressure on them. Uh, just to stop them coming forward. So you can see, like, we got tons of vision across the map of those creep tumors, which is really nice. Uh, yeah, I need to be ca uh, careful. Obviously, I don't want to die. I'm fairly safe with the bolt of the storm, but, you know, better safe than sorry. Uh, so they're just going to try to do as much damage to this boss as possible. But as you can see, like, they've got very poor single target damage. Like, very poor. I mean, they've almost got it to half health. It's already at the core. Really nice Void Prison from our Zera tool, locking down four of them. I throw some damage in. We got an Apocalypse to follow up. All right, now the boss is beating on the core. Our team are just beating on the core. There's really nothing they can do. And that is the game right there. Let's pause it right here. Um, so, yeah, going over the build for Sagara, it's it's very similar uh, from you know, the build you normally go for. Um, I mean, Battle Momentum has, as they've increased the, the cooldown on uh, Devouring Maw, that's become more popular. Um, I think it's, like, super, super effective, though, combined with Nidus Network, because, again, the, the sort of the regeneration they've added to Nidus Network just fuels all those abilities. You're able to, like, spam out stuff all over the place it's funny it's actually super effective in team fights because you can hop into that to escape again like for example when zul i think he like thought he had me caught uh i can't move the mouse because uh we have triggered the victory thing but remember when we were down here he thought he caught me he dropped his heroic he dropped his bone prison i just hopped into a maw and it's like well he kind of wasted those two abilities you know that kind of sucks right for him that really sucks that's a lot of his kill pressure that's a lot of his team fight just gone wasted um so, it, like, it is useful. You watch out for people who have, like, obviously stuns that can interrupt you getting into them. But, I mean, like, in quick match, often they won't have that. And it can be super effective. You can just be a bit of a bully and then just hop into your uh, your network and escape. And it's hilarious. Uh, and it gives you a ton of map pressure. You can see, like, early game, they were kicking our ass. Then as we transitioned into that Sagara plus Abathur late game, we just really dominated them. They really didn't have the the wave cleared uh, to really contest us. Even picking up stage dive and med uh, the medivac, they really couldn't contest it. Uh, if we pop over here and we look at the stats, so you can see uh, Diablo did a ton of siege damage as well, as did Abathur. Like, our teammates did really well. Diablo, I really liked the build he went for. Again, he went for, like, the damage he build. Uh, let's rewind it slightly so we can see this. So, you know, stats. You've seen the stats at the end. Uh, we did a lot of hero damage with Zagara, even without them all. You know, that's the thing. You know, people, are, I know some people are saying, oh, is it going to be awkward? Is it going to be awkward? No, it's not. All right, cool. Here we go. So Diablo, what did he pick up? So he reduced the, the cost, which is interesting. They went for the Fire Devil, Fire Sto uh, Fire Storm, and Rampage combo, which I really like. And he picked up uh, Momentum too. Really good. Um... And yeah, I mean, like, we, we just did, we did a ton of damage. Uh, you know, like, uh, Devouring Maw obviously brings a lot of power to the team fight. And considering this team comp, it wouldn't have been terrible. I mean, like, a Maw into an Apocalypse, or like a Void Prison into a Maw into an Apocalypse would be in incredibly powerful. Uh, like, there's, there's some serious combos we could have set up. But I decided, you know what, I wanted to play with the network, and I think it worked out pretty good. Um, <laughs> Brightwing wasn't happy, but then I wasn't happy with Brightwing. Uh, let me know what you th did think about that, but uh, there you go. I mean, you know, the the the, the mall brings it brings team fight control. It's it's useful, but I mean, network is underrated. I think it does a lot of good, especially on a big map like this. And like, it is useful in team fights. Don't think it's not, because it is. And yeah, just it, you, the the crucial points though. I mean, the only crucial thing is you need battle momentum and network. They combo together so well. Without battle momentum, you won't have enough networks. They're just going to get destroyed. You're not going to have the map presence. Your cooldown is too long for it to be any good. 
Uh, you need battle momentum for that. And then the mana regen you get with the network just enhances battle momentum so much. The synergy between these two talents is unbelievable now that they have buffed it. Uh, so try her out. Again, apart from that, it was pure standard Zagara. Absolutely standard. And uh, there you go. It's a ton of fun. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed. Give it a like if you did enjoy. Um, and do let me know in the comments as well what you think about the whole SAS thing. What you think about my ideas of like, um, it's my approach. You're not going to change my mind. Like, this is just the way I am. It's my opinion on justice and stuff. Like, if someone is, is being a douchebag, you know, I'll probably be a douchebag to them. I will never, ever, you know, start flaming someone. Um if they haven't flamed someone first, you know, I'll, I'll never be the guy who starts going like, I'll, you know, I'll never be the guy, you know, we're fighting and, you know, then I'll just start going like, oh, I'm like, I'll say it on stream or I'll say it when I'm commentating or something. I'll be like, you know, I don't really think, you know, whatever this up with their build. I think it's dumb. You know, why would you pick up ultimate evolution when you're picking up the symbiote build? You know, obviously it worked really well. Right. But I'm like, yeah, you know, they don't synergize that well. And you know, they don't synergize well, but still, you know, what? you know, I might say something like that, for example, uh, in a commentary or uh, if I'm playing the game live, but I'll never go into chat and start flaming people. I just think that's a bit of a dick move. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll only start again. I was pretty mean to Brightwing. You know, I called Brightwing little bitch. Uh, but that's because Brightwing was being a little bitch, in my opinion. Uh, so let me know what you think. Uh, do you guys do this? I think it's effective. You know, I, I, I do think you should do it sometimes. Like, I think if someone is being an absolute asshole, they're flaming. Like, this happens sometimes, for example, if I'm playing with someone, with my with a friend who's new to the game, people will start flaming them, being like, you know, you're, you're playing shit or whatever. And it's like, yeah, they're new. Uh, so then, like, I'll start, I'll be like, stop being a dick. Or I'll start calling them out in their stuff. Uh, because, you know what, that's just, it's, just, it's not cool. It's not cool. But I mean, I would never, I would never, I just never ever condone like just starting a flame war. But if someone is being a douchebag, I think, you know what, you should help out the people who are being attacked and you should, you know, say something back. You need to put people in their place sometimes. Bring some harsh, harsh justice. Bring some harsh justice to uh, the Nexus or whatever this place is called. Thank you guys for watching. I've been Enough Kex. Hope you enjoyed. See you all next time. Bye bye.